City Rev Life Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm here with Pastor Roby. Howdy. Good to see you, Pastor Roby. Good to see you, man. Uh, well, we're excited to get into this conversation. Today, we're kicking off uh, a new theme for us on the City Rev Life Podcast that really is a step uh, further in the conversation we've been having on Sundays. Uh, recently, now, we've been in this series called Faith and Logic, exploring God designed for what it means to be a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be having a few episodes that talk about the topic of masculinity from a biblical framework. And so maybe, Roby, why don't you just start by framing the conversation, sure. setting us up for what we can expect. Yeah. So in our series, we've been talking Faith and Logic, Volume 4. Um, and uh, on the weekend, we've been talking about God's design for masculinity and femininity, like you said. And a lot of what we've talked about in the messages is uh, femininity and how the view of um, the biblical view of femininity is contrary to popular opinion, very empowering, life giving when mm -hmm. set in the right context and understood in its fullness. And so, uh, but we wanted to take a few podcast episodes. We're going to talk a little bit more about femininity as well, but we wanted to take a few to talk about masculinity. And really, the reason is because I think in our generation, We've spent a lot of time in our in the last maybe uh, well probably a hundred years maybe even talking about femininity in and for good reason right there's ways that as a culture we have been um, releasing uh, women in our church in our well in our churches and in our in our societies um, from ways that they're oppressed and sure. so. Um, going all the way back to women being able to vote and then on through uh, identifying in the last several decades just systemic things in culture, maybe um, view, views and thoughts of that, ne that we need to be freed from in our culture so that women can be empowered. And so we've been working through that as a culture for a long time. And there's many ways as a church, as a church, as a big C church, I mean, like the broader church, right. we would support those and should be driving a lot of those things. Right. Some of those things in modern feminism, we would not identify with. We've talked about some of those things, yep. such as like maybe um, abortion or some of those things that we actually would see as actually hurtful to women and not helpful. Right. Um, but those are other podcasts for other days. But the what we're wanting to talk about in these these is masculinity, and here's why. Because mm -hmm. I, my perspective in the last few decades, in particular, as we've been thinking about femininity, the only things that we've talked about in our generation in our culture are the negatives of masculinity. Right. So that leaves a vacuum. So what does good, healthy, and even more importantly, biblical masculinity right. look like in a way that is a benefit to both men and women. Yeah. So that's and what we want to look at. The way at. I've heard you frame this before is just a, a way that this takes place in our culture is if there's ever a man in a story, in a movie, in a in a TV show, they're most often depicted as the blundering fool mm. who is the butt of everybody's jokes. You know, it's dad, yeah. he's an idiot. Or, you yeah. know, it's the husband, he's, you know, he's a loser. Yeah. Um, and that's just this theme because it's like our culture doesn't know what to do with manhood. Right, right. And so I, I think that is something to, to watch for. In some ways, there's way that we are redeeming the role of, of women in our stories. That's positive. You know, I think you see it's not always just the woman and her function in the story is to be rescued. Right, sure. But uh, we, I've also noted sometimes then like you said, then they don't know what to do with the men because they don't want to stereotypically make the man the rescuer. And so a lot of times, sometimes you see kind of the other extreme where the man's just an idiot and just, yeah. you know, and so how do you, how do we position masculinity in a way that is life giving for a man and a woman? And how do we position femininity in a way that is life giving and empowering for a woman and for a man as well? Like yeah. there's there should be a way to do that, and the Bible should be yeah. And made. it's our conviction that the Scripture gives us that roadmap. Yes. So and start start us off. Give yeah. us give us our first kind of piece of the puzzle of, of how we're thinking about manhood, masculinity. So there's a couple different ways I think we'll we'll, we'll look at, but there's one, and, and let me just preface it with this. Uh, there are ways that we've talked about, again, in our Faith and Logic 4 series, that there are ways God is, is communicating and accentuating a part of himself through femininity, and powerful, beautiful, glorious ways he's reflecting himself through femininity, and powerful, beautiful, glorious ways he's, re he's reflecting himself through masculinity. 
There is a lot of similarities between men and women, but there are some distinctions, and those distinctions play out differently in varying capacities among women and among men. And so, but we do want to see it. There, there may be some of those things that he's highlighting in femininity, like we talked about, like nurturing. Women have a high capacity for nurturing. That doesn't mean that men are not nurturing at all. So yep. some of the ways that we're going to talk about masculinity, it doesn't mean that women are not these things. In fact, there's some women that uh, display this in a beautiful way. But we want to see what is the Bible saying are particulars that God is wanting to accentuate in, in men. And one of them is a curious passage I want to just start with, is 1 Corinthians 16. And uh, these are, are Paul's words, um, where he, he he's just kind of like uh, walking through s several just final things that he's mm -hmm. encouraging encouraging them to be and it's um what is it verses first, 13 and 14 oh, 13 first corinthians and 14. 16 yeah. yeah yeah there you go so verse uh, first corinthians 16 verse 13 he says this be watchful stand firm in the faith act like men be strong let all that you do be done in love and so uh, all great staccato kind of challenges but there's this one phrase that says act like men which is very interesting. It kind of sticks out among the list. Yeah, act like men. And it's like, okay, that might be one thing to say to your boy's soccer team, but like in the Bible, <laughs> like what does that mean, Paul? Like what do you mean act like? That's what we're trying to figure out. What does it mean to act like a man? And so having done some thoughts, uh, some study in this, um, that is a very interesting word in the Greek. That phrase, act like men, is a single word in the Greek. It is a verb and it's a command. Mm. And it is anchored in the Old Testament. And just not to completely nerd out, but the idea here is in the Old, t the, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, New Testament's written in Greek. But there is something instructive to us in that there is a, the, an ancient translation of the Old Testament called the Septuagint where they had translated the Hebrew Old Testament into the Greek. And sometimes the New Testament writers are quoting the Old Testament in Hebrew. Sometimes they're quoting it in Greek. And so what's interesting is that word there, act like men, is a Greek word that the Old Testament often uses for courage when it's being translated into Greek. Right. So in other words, that phrase uh, in the Greek thinking the idea of acting like a man was an idea inherent in the concept of courage, yeah. which you can understand most of the armies in antiquity that were walking into battle to defend their homes. Um, they were, that was the man, a man's responsibility in antiquity. And that is one of the primary ways we think about courage. There's like this battle, there's something frightening that has to be, you know, there's something that has to be slayed. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so that idea of courage being connected to that imagery, I think it resonates not just biblically, but across cultures. Across right. So for example, the, um, I think in the Old Testament, Joshua 1.9, um, Joshua is being commissioned mm -hmm. to lead all of Israel and they're going to be going into the promised land and they're going to be fighting battles. They yeah. are not a trained army, but they mm -hmm. are going to have to walk into battles and, uh, and, and fight these, these, uh, these battles, trusting the Lord. That's going to require incredible courage. And Joshua is told famously, um, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. That word there, courageous, when it's translated into Greek is this same word. In other words, be strong and manly would be yeah. another way of saying it. And, and they're, they're talking about c courage. So I think that's important because there are some negatives about manhood and masculinity that are, um, an, uh, would be a, a counterfeit account. Thank you. Yeah. A counterfeit version of that. There is a, an idea that for starters, sometimes the idea of masculinity with as this warrior can have a negative connotation in the sense that they're just full of testosterone and all they know how to do is to fight and dominate. Right. Well, that would be a negative view of, of masculinity or a very narrow view of masculinity. And, and that's not the courage we're talking that's about. That's not the courage we're talking about. And I would caution us from stripping away the idea of a warrior from masculinity altogether, because mm -hmm. it's not inherently negative to build warriors. The mm -hmm. important thing is, what are they fighting for? Yeah, and how are they fighting? Yes, yes. There's something redeeming that God wants to to stir within men 
this courage that we might fight for things that need to be fought for yes. and fought in a way that honors the Lord. Cause there's a way of, of doing the, you know, for the right reasons, the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to um, some parents one time and they told me that they were very skeptical of having like mm-hmm. toy weapons for their son. Sure. And so they didn't want to grow him up with this kind of like over aggressive and kind of violence, which is a negative association in our modern culture with, yeah. with masculinity. And so they didn't, they didn't have any toy weapons. And then they were just watching him play outside with his friends and they watched him just pull. They said he just pulled branches down and made them into swords. Yeah. And there is a sense in which um, there is something redeemable about a warrior. We just want to train them to be uh, selfless, courageous warriors fighting for the right thing. And that thing they're fighting for is not violently fighting for themselves. Yes. So let's not completely throw out the warrior idea because in that inherently is courage. Yeah. The second thing I think courage corrects about a bad view of masculinity is stoicism. Mm -hmm. And there's the sense in which men should not be emotional. We're not, I'm not afraid of anything. Nothing gets me down. I'm never sad. Men don't cry. We don't, you know, we, right. we don't cry. I don't show emotion. Don't have emotions. Like I'm just stoic. I'm just, I'm a brick, you know, and that's, I'm just one muscle, you know, and it doesn't, nothing gets to me. And that is not a healthy or a biblical, that's not a way to be a healthy human, yeah. but that's not healthy or biblical. And that's not what courage is. Yes. And that's not, that's not what we're after. That's not what we're hoping to look for. And I think Maybe if you could recap, um, it was so helpful in that fourth sermon you did on in mm. the Faith and Logic 4 series. So mm-hmm. Faith and Logic 4, message number four. Yeah. And you were painting a picture of Christ's courage, of how he demonstrated courage. Maybe just with that warrior, what we mean by yeah. someone who's willing to fight. Can you maybe paint a picture of the way that Jesus demonstrated courage and demonstrated that warrior's heart yeah. at the end of his life? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, uh, Jesus often is depicted as a warrior. Mm. I mean, he is, he is, there's a reason that Jesus shares the name Joshua. I mean, the, the, he, the long story short, the name Joshua, Yeshua in the Old Testament mm-hmm. is translated into Greek, and that's how we get Jesus. So Jesus and Joshua is the same name. And he's the new Joshua, whereas Joshua went in as a conqueror. Um, Jesus went in and allowed himself to be conquered for his people. And yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a... Subversion. Exactly. It turns that up upside down. Jesus courageously came and he could have stopped yeah. the whipping, the mocking, the beating, the crucifixion. He could have called down a, a legions of angels to stop it, but he courageously, without a word, were, he was foretold to walk forward into that mm-hmm. without a word, being abandoned, rejected, betrayed, and he was willing to take all of that pain and agony, mm. physically, emotionally, spiritually, for the sake of winning his, his bride, the church. And that is an incredible, courageous picture of, of manhood. Um, I, I think what's so great about associating the idea of courage mm-hmm. with masculinity is that courage is not stoicism. A, a man can still have emotion. He yeah. can still be honest about his emotion. He can shed tears. He can feel fear. He can be honest about his fear. He can be honest about his weaknesses. That is not the same mm-hmm. thing as courage. Courage is moving forward despite the very mm-hmm. real emotion I feel. So courage is a great answer to a bad version of masculinity, which is stoicism. Yeah. We do not want to teach our sons stoicism. We want them to actually have emotional health, be, in, be aware of their emotion, have a good emotional intelligence. We want them to be aware of their emotion, be able to express their emotion, but also have the courage to walk forward. Yeah. It also redeems the warrior yeah. because a warrior is an important thing. And this idea of courage is associated with walking into battle. And so it redeems the warrior. The question is not, and we'll probably talk about this more as we go, but the question is not, well, let's just remove the warrior. We want to remove the violence and the dominance of just for... Self-centered, self-absorption, power-hungry. Exactly. That's what we want to remove. But someone who's courageously walking forward to fight on behalf 
of uh, justice and righteousness and yeah. for the, for others, we want to build warriors like that. That's right. That's right. That's helpful. Uh, as you were saying that the other person that shares Jesus' name very closely is Hosea, yeah. as I was reminded. Oh, yeah. And just the picture of Hosea, the prophet in the Old Testament, that God commands to pursue his unfaithful bride, to love her, um, to take her back, to go find her. And chapter three, she's like on the auction mm. block. And uh, Hosea goes and he self-sacrificingly goes and he calls her to himself. Yeah. Um, and just that powerful picture that we can have. And so what I'm hearing you say is, um, in reaction, our culture, we, we don't know what to do with being a man. So we, we like to just throw, yeah. throw away everything. We like to throw away uh, a lot of... Um, some of the things that God actually wants to redeem and restore mm -hmm. to their authentic, powerful um, quality in nature. And we see that ultimately in Jesus. Yes. And we see that in him. Any just closing thoughts before we just wrap up our uh, conversation? A, a couple closing thoughts. Um, again, this doesn't mean that we don't want courageous women. <laughs> we, we want sure. courageous women. I'm, I want to raise my, I have a son and two daughters. Uh, you have uh, a daughter and two sons. Yep. We want our kids, both our daughters and our sons, to be courageous. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also challenge uh, men and parents of boys to build um, to build men of courage. And yeah. and sometimes that courage looks a little differently than we're expecting. It could be honestly, uh, husbands, the courage to go to a counselor, the courage to be honest with your with your with your wife on on mm -hmm. on how you feel. I mean, sometimes it takes courage as a man to express emotion. It, it could be mm -hmm. courage to step in and lead your family uh, spiritually. It could be courage to be vulnerable to another brother about a, a sin struggle. I mean, it's courage is whatever the right thing is, not just not just the thing we want to do and to prove ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes courage is to humble ourselves. And I just want to close with this. I, I love this story. I'll just close with it briefly. But um, it was the more it was the the morning before D Day, and General Patton um, Patton sent his son, who is in uh, West Point, a letter. And here's what he said. And I'll, I'll close with this: All men are timid on entering any fight, whether it is the first fight or the last fight. All of us are timid. Cowards are those who let their timidity get the better of their manhood. You will never do that. I think I've told you the story of Mar uh, Marshal Touraine, who fought under Louis XIV on the morning of one of his last battles. He had been fighting for 40 years. He was mounting his horse when a young ADC, who had just come from the court and had never missed a meal or heard a hostile shot, said, Monsieur Touraine, it amazes me that a man of your supposed courage should permit his knees to tremble as he walks out to mount. Touraine replied, My Lord Duke, I admit that my knees do tremble, but should they know where they shall this day, where I shall this day take them, they would shake even more. That is it. Your knees may shake, but they will always take you toward the enemy. The idea of courage, I love that. The idea of mm -hmm. courage is not the absence of fear, but it's doing the right thing, even when it's terrifying. Yeah. And so I think that is such a, a powerful uh, association that is uh, in the scripture about being a man. General Patton. General Patton, there you go. That'll fire you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hey, we hope that this conversation uh, about masculinity as we set up and start on this series has been helpful to you. And uh, we will see you on the next episode as we continue this conversation. Thank you so much for listening to the City Rev Life podcast. Feel free to subscribe and leave a rate and review. And we love it when you share it with your friends on social media. So don't forget to tag us at cityrev.church. If you're interested in more resources, download our City Rev Church app and follow us on social media. Thank you so much and have a great day.